Hello, I'm Dr. Scott Trenhale. I'd like to take a few moments to introduce you to some of the members of my team to discuss the important aspects about your upcoming surgery. Please feel free to stop the video and take notes so that you can address your concerns prior to your procedure. Thank you for your attention. Hello, my name is Alyssa and I'm part of Dr. Trenhill's nursing team. Prior to surgery, you may be asked to obtain lab work, a history and physical from your primary care physician and or clearance from other medical specialists that you are under the care of. Directions for all blood thinners should be coming from their offices. You may also be asked to obtain and use a preoperative skin prep solution prior to your procedure. If you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact the office. Preoperatively, you will have a visit scheduled back in the office prior to your procedure. At this visit, you will watch a preoperative teaching video and all your questions will be answered. Prior to surgery, you may be asked to obtain lab work, a history and physical from your primary care physician, and or clearance from other medical specialists that you are under the care of. Directions for all blood thinners should be coming from their offices. You may also be asked to obtain and use a preoperative skin prep solution prior to your procedure. While each circumstance is unique, patients are typically prescribed postoperative pain medication and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medications. We will provide you the prescription of your pain medication prior to your surgery to assure timely filling of the medication prior to your surgery. We ask that you please do not take the pain medication until after your completion of your surgery. These medications are for home use only and will not need to be brought with you the day of your surgery. The medications are chosen so that they may be taken together safely as long as you follow the directions on the pill bottles from the pharmacy. It is important that you inform our healthcare team of all medications that you take on a regular basis, including supplements and over-the-counter medications. You may be asked to stop some of these medications prior to your surgery. The day of your surgery, please come to the procedure with a driver that can stay throughout the entirety of your case as this is an outpatient procedure and you will be going home the same day. Please make sure to wear loose fitting clothing that was easy to put on after your procedure. If a shoulder procedure is being performed, an oversized button down shirt is best the day of your surgery as it will comfortably fit over you and your pillow sling. Surgical patients typically receive general anesthesia in which you will be completely asleep. In addition, it is usually recommended that a regional nerve block also be given in combination to the general anesthetic. During the block, you will be able to breathe on your own, but will be unaware of the block procedure taking place. Generally, I recommend the nerve block as it should provide numbness that typically lasts 12 to 24 hours in duration. This will allow you to start your oral pain medication at home as directed while the block wears off. Starting the oral pain medication as the feeling begins to return allows for a smooth transition between the regional block and the oral medication. Side effects of the block also include the inability to move your extremity to include fingers and toes depending on an upper versus lower extremity block. The inability to move your extremity typically resolves when the feeling returns or possibly sooner. It is very common for patients undergoing upper extremity blocks to experience some pain in the armpit region after surgery as the nerve block does not provide relief of pain in this area. Basic risks associated with the surgery include but are not limited to things like blood clots, infections, hematoma, failure of the procedure and or implants, including loosening of the implants and dislocation, nerve damage and fractures and need to repeat surgery. These risks are low, but are known risks to the procedure. As we get closer to your surgical date, your time for surgery will be released. If your surgery is on a Monday, you will receive a call from our office prior to 3 p.m. on the Friday preceding. For all other surgery dates, you will be notified by 3 p.m. the day before the surgery. Remember, nothing to eat or drink after midnight the night before your surgery. After arthroscopic rotator cuff repair and or labral surgery, you will be placed into a pillow sling. This will need to be worn constantly until the nerve block has worn off in order to protect your shoulder, elbow, and hand. Plan on wearing the sling for approximately six weeks after the surgery if any type of repair of soft tissue was performed in your shoulder. This would include a rotator cuff repair, labral repair, or biceps tenodesis. If only a debridement was performed, such as a subacromial decompression, distal clavicle excision, selective release, or joint debridement, the sling may be used for comfort only as needed. You will be given written instructions before leaving the facility on the day of the surgery detailing the limitations that are specific to your procedure. A white absorbent dressing will be placed over your shoulder. The dressing is applied to keep the portals clean during the healing process. Immediately after the surgery, the fluid used to descend the shoulder will leak from the portals and is then absorbed into the bandage. 
Occasionally, the fluid will leak beneath the bandage and a towel can be placed under the arm to soak up the fluid. The bandage should not be removed, but instead reinforced with more bandages or a towel. Occasionally, the fluid that comes out of the shoulder is blood tinged in color. Don't be alarmed as this is fairly common. If you have any questions or concerns about the amount of drainage that is occurring, please call the number provided to you. The absorbent bandage may be completely removed 48 hours after surgery and you may take a brief shower. The sling is removed and the operative arm is allowed to hang down by your side. The arm is safe as long as you do not attempt to move it in any direction. Bending at the waist to allow your arm to move away from your body using gravity will allow safe access to the axilla for cleaning. These are called pendulum exercises. At this point in your recovery, I do not recommend any prolonged exposure to water including bathtubs, swimming pools, or hot tubs. After the shower, you may towel dry the surgical site and apply band-aids to all surgical sites. Don't try to clean the operative soap from your shoulder as it has to exfoliate or wear off with time. There are times where your sling can be removed. It is safe to remove the sling while seated in a chair, using a computer, feeding yourself, or using the restroom. We typically use the analogy of squeezing a pen in the armpit. As we mentioned earlier, you will need to remove the sling to shower as well. At all other times, it is important that you wear the sling for activities including walking and sleeping. Avoid exercise and driving until you are seen back in the office seven to 10 days after the surgery. At your first post-operative visit, we will remove sutures and discuss with you the arthroscopic photos that were taken at the time of your surgery and also discuss the next steps of your rehabilitation process, including when to initiate physical therapy. Therapy may begin as early as 10 days or as late as six weeks post-operatively, depending on what was found at the time of your surgery. A typical rehabilitation course runs approximately three to four months. At the conclusion of this, it is important to note that shoulder remodeling continues over the course of one year after your surgery, and it may take a full year to achieve maximal use.